Hey everyone, so we finally have a first scientific publication that attempts to explain what might be happening with the children that are getting the mysterious hepatitis. So this is what we'll be discussing today in our video. It's a fairly complicated topic, so I'll have to give you lots of background. Before I get started, I wanted to remind you we have a first another COVID Q&A event coming up. Please stay till the end of the video to find out how you can get free tickets for that. And uh, let's get going. So we made a, another video about hepatitis and we discussed how the hepatitis might be caused because of the fact that the liver is being infiltrated by, by T cells that recognize the spike protein. Well, it seems like perhaps something similar might also be happening in children. So in order to accurately explain what might be happening, these children that are getting the hepatitis, they would have to be somehow infected previously by uh, SARS-CoV-2 virus. So for this hypothesis to be accurate, that's what would have to happen. But it also brings up another important topic, which is the topic of the fact that SARS-CoV-2 might have what is referred to as super antigen. So I need to explain that. So first of all, what is an antigen? An antigen is basically anything that our immune system will recognize and respond to. So the way it works is that when cells, immune cells recognize a pathogen that is infecting us, it will it will absorb that pathogen, break it down into pieces, into components, and then fragments, protein fragments of that pathogen are then displayed by specific receptors on the cell surface. These receptors are, are called major histocompatibility complexes. And this, the genes responsible for creating these receptors are some of the most diverse genes, actually the most diverse gene in our human genomes. And the reason why is so that the population can have enough, enough diversity to make sure that as a population we can actually survive infections so once the antigen is presented on a on the cell surface of these immune cells that that would be clearing the pathogens then what happens afterwards it's being these tiny fragments of the pathogen are subsequently recognized by either t cells or b cells and then that's how you can activate specific immune cells to make sure that uh, the immune system responds to a specific pathogen that, that will be then recognized and cleared out of the system. So that's how typically it works with the antigen. So what about super antigen? So what is that? It's actually a fairly new concept. It's only been, that term super antigen has only been coined in 1989 for the first time. And uh, basically it means it's a type of antigen that happens to bind to a lot of different, different of these major histo histocompatibility complexes and therefore is recognized by also many different types of T cell receptors. So which means that super antigens accidentally activate way too many T cells than it normally should. So as a consequence, you would have the super antigens can lead to inflammation, cytokine storm, cytotoxicity, energy, which is basically where the T cells stop properly responding to the antigens because they're overactivated and even autoimmunity. And all of this has actually been observed with COVID-19, including with autoimmunity. For example, one, one example, is um, is insulin uh, dependent uh, diabetes. It's a form of autoimmunity as well, where T cells start attacking um, the e pancreatic cells, proteins, or and therefore destroying destroying the 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 system. So all of this has been observed with COVID nineteen, which is why it has been suspected that SARS CoV two might have a super antigen present on it. Uh, and one of its viral proteins. Now, prior to even vaccination, at the start of the pandemic, a paper did come out proposing that it's the spike protein itself that could be presenting such a super antigen. 
and uh, the authors were warning about that, that that could be an issue in the future. Of course, that's the unfortunate part. Oftentimes when a, when a single scientist is warning about something specifically, they often will not be heard by, by the majority just because, well, it's a voice of one scientist. But the reason why the super antigen was proposed is because of um, an example that it was, the, there's a sequence of the spike protein that is very similar to the most famous super antigen we know, which is, um, which is um, a form of a bacterial uh, super antigen from Staphylococcus bacteria. So it's that super antigen that can overactivate our immune system is referred to uh, Staphylococcus enterotoxin B. And uh, that, that particular super antigen has been known to actually cause um, inflammation um, in children. And the authors mentioned very broad inflammation in, in children. And the authors mentioned that there's a fragment of the spike protein that is very similar to that same sequence of that bacterial bacterial protein and also it mimics um, with its sequence some of the neurotoxins so you might have heard that that um, SARS-CoV-2 can elicit a response in our body this in a similar fashion that some of the we see some of such response from neurotoxins and uh, and what that sequence is is actually it's the sequence that has been inserted in this SARS-CoV-2 virus that is not present in any other coronavirus. It's that sequence that is responsible for furin cleavage site. Oh, I got some pollen. And, uh, and um, that same sequence that introduces the furin cleavage site, which makes coronaviruses, SARS-CoV-2 coronavirus more infectious in general, might also be that, that super antigen that might be overactivating our system. All right, so that's that's uh, going to be important in order to be able to for me to explain hepatitis uh, event in children. We're not there yet. Another important information to mention is that is that uh, SARS-CoV-2, when it infects people, it might have the capacity to reside very long term in humans inside the gut. So once it actually gets inside our gut it can stay there for a very long time and therefore it can continuously reactivate our immune system over time all right so it's so that means that if children get infected they could actually still have SARS-CoV-2 for a very long time afterwards despite the fact that they might not even present any symptoms all right so one more thing that I have to mention before we finally finally bring it all together and it's the fact that in a lot of these children children that are presenting with hepatitis is the fact that they are also being infected what appears that they are being infected with adenovirus with a specific adenovirus it's adenovirus 41 that particular adenovirus is not really that rare it's it, it, it is found to commonly infect people but it doesn't cause hepatitis normally it's it, it that's not what it normally is it's um, symptoms at all so that doesn't yet explain on its own as to why this might be leading to hepatitis however as I already told you super antigens the way they they act is because of genetics because of the type of major histocompatibility complexes that people might be expressing so depending on on your genetics and what kind of receptors you will produce will depend de determine what kind of fragments of pathogens you will be presenting to the to the T cells so that's genetic but it's also environmentally induced in that in that it's known that super antigens are especially active if you have both bacterial and viral co-infections so that's where you stimulate the activity of the super antigens even more so what might be happening here is that in children the reason why they might be experiencing this uh, event is because they are co-infected with both the adenovirus 
as well as they might have still the continuous presence of that SARS-CoV-2 virus in their gut with the presence of that super antigen and therefore because the immune system is continuously activated it's now super activated the liver becomes infiltrated with the T cells and leading to destruction of destruction of uh, their their liver so that's so far the only hypothesis that we've seen that has been pro proposed and and published in the scientific literature and it's something that could be directly measured so it would be interesting to see whether this hypothesis turns out to be true so we are, we've never presented the concept of super antigen before even though that information has been as I mentioned already talked about discussed at the very beginning of the pandemic and for this might be the first reasons where that hypothesis of SARS-CoV-2 virus and the spike protein being a form of a super antigen with the presence of this hepatitis, mysterious hepatitis in children, that might be the first example of it that might confirm that this is true. All right, so I'm totally bushwhacking here. So if you stay with me till this moment, hey, I wanted to let you know that we have another COVID Q&A event. It was a lot of fun. Basically those events, we answer a bunch of questions. So we, co we compile questions from the audience and we answer those and then it's open mic to the audience for the re remainder of the event they're a lot of fun basically we we uh any anyone can ask any questions all levels of knowledge are welcome and um and yeah if you want a free ticket the first 10 subscribers to our newsletter post this video will send you the we send you a free ticket we also have another event coming up these event this this second event is for business owners that would be interested in offering their employees a wellness program package where three different experts got together including myself where we teach about different information about well-being we have a expert from uh, mental health well-being financial well-being and myself uh, discuss about physical well-being in a context of using dna mapping as well to help you start predicting with potential information with regards to how to maintain your ideal well-being so if that is of interest to deliver that to your employees to make sure they can feel the best and perform the best and please check it out uh, the information to those events is also uh, provided in the description below so if you like this information please give us a like subscribe to the channel leave a comment and uh, you know how it helps us we love this we love interacting with you and we look forward to seeing you next time bye everyone Thank you.